This video contains spoilers for Half-Life Opposing Force. Within the vast multiverse, there have been many iconic figures throughout time that have changed the world for the better. These figures are known for how they have acted within the tough situation that they have found themselves in. On planet Earth, we call these people heroes. In the dark and brutal timeline of the Half-Life universe, there have been many heroes that through adversity and tough situations have thrived and conquered their opposing forces to save the lives of many. In some cases, showing a brave new side to them they were unaware existed in the first place. During the early 2000s, there was one man who gave everything to aid complete strangers after he had found himself in a seemingly unwinnable situation. While the world does lack people of this calibre, these people are remembered in the aftermath of such heroic actions. While many did not survive the Black Mesa incident, those that did remember this man after he had saved them and would thank him for many years to come. Who was the unsung hero of Black Mesa and where is he now? Here we explore, in the lore behind, Corporal Adrian Shepard. After the invasion of the Combine disrupted the ability to access the internet, and thus, the ability to look up Earth's most influential people, not a lot of information is known about Adrian Shepard's early years. What we do know is that he was born in 1978 and would grow up to find an interest in the United States military, and so, he joined the United States Marine Corps. As a member of the Marine Corps, Adrian would set up his future. While he intended to go on adventures and fight for a cause bigger than himself, there were outside forces also interested in his skills. These forces would work in the shadows to influence situations to push Adrian on the right path, a path that could lead to his employment with them. Located within the New Mexico desert in Arizona, the United States military had set up the Santiago military base. Here, they used the best advanced training available at the time to train up their recruits. Within the facility, those stationed there were trained mercilessly for upcoming missions by its drill instructors, two of which known to Corporal Shepard being Senior Drill Instructor Dwight T. Barnes and Drill Instructor Sharp. These men would go on to train the entirety of the Hazardous Environmental Combat Unit, Marines specially trained at the Santiago military base to tackle various indoor combat situations where the Marines would have to survive dangerous environments and fight against unconventional hostile forces. With an upcoming mission to prepare their recruits for, the drill instructors got to work to get their men in shape for a top secret mission that would in turn, and unknowingly, have a giant impact on the future of the human race. As his advanced training began at the brutal boot camp, Adrian, along with the other members of the Hazardous Environmental Combat Unit, were trained in various fields to maximize their chances of success. Members were trained in the operation of heavy-duty vehicles, such as the M35 cargo trucks, which would allow the grunt to transport heavy goods, personnel, and equipment, while the V-22 Ospreys would allow the transportation of the units into the combat zones for their missions. After being bumped to the top of the advanced training list, Adrian was taught to use a variety of weapons fit for any occasion through the brutal advanced training course. For this, he was given a powered combat vest that would allow him to take a substantial amount of damage, and taught to navigate trickier environments through the use of ropes and how to avoid obstacles and dangerous substances. While training, Adrian began to notice someone visiting the military base on a fairly regular basis. On May the 3rd of the early 2000s, Adrian first heard of this man, who was nicknamed the G-Man, due to the soldiers stationed at the base believing him to be a part of the government. He had stood out to the soldiers due to his suit and briefcase, which he appeared to wear every time he visited. Due to the frustrations of constant training without being sent on any missions, Adrian later hoped that the G-Man had come to the military base to recruit members after he had heard rumours that the G-Man was a part of a secret research group looking for recruits. On May the 7th, Adrian saw the G-Man for the first time, and while he had initially hoped to be hired by this man as he sought adventure, Adrian lost hope in his initial thought of adventure after his first sighting of the G-Man. To Adrian, 
This government man looked more like a lawyer or an insurance agent instead of a secret research group leader. What did confuse Adrian during this first visit was that he noticed the government man watching him from afar throughout the day, something Corporal Shepard thought to be odd. As the days went on, Adrian continued to be put through brutal training sessions at the military base, and on May 9th, Adrian and his group were informed by their drill instructor that they had one week to become experts at indoor strategic combat, where they were to train every day of the following week at the combat simulation facility. With being given this news, some members began to believe they were being prepared for a mission coming close in the future. By May 12th, Adrian and his squad continued to believe that they were being primed for a specific mission, but they could not agree on what the mission actually was. Over this time, the name Black Mesa Facility had been thrown about, but with Black Mesa being so top secret, no one knew what actually occurred there. With speculation, some members of the Santiago military base believed it to be some sort of research facility. On May 15th, it was confirmed to Adrian and his team that they were being trained for a mission at the Black Mesa research facility. From the snippets of information they could gather about the place, they believed it only to be a place where scientists worked on research. To this, Adrian wondered why they were being trained for such a dull place. He was also told that they were to prepare to leave for the mission at any moment in the event that it happened. But Adrian and his squad had no idea what it was. All they had to do was prepare. With the soldiers of the Hazardous Environmental Combat Unit preparing for the aftermath of an upcoming event, it would appear to some that whatever was to happen was planned by intelligent shadowy forces behind the scenes. On May 16th of the early 2000s, the day after Corporal Adrian Shepard along with the Environmental Combat Unit had been told to be ready for an event to occur, the scientists of the Black Mesa Research Facility unintentionally created a resonance cascade after testing an unstable crystal sample from the border world of Zen. With this disaster, alien life forms had flooded into the facility, attacking the personnel. With a bridge between Earth and Zen and the potential for the rest of Earth to be affected by these alien forces, the HECU were already en route to the facility, completely trained for the mission at hand. Only these soldiers were to be told not to only clear the facility of all alien life forms, but also to remove all witnesses to the event. This meant killing all human personnel at the facility too, as the G-Man had also had a hand in manipulating the event that had caused the resonance cascade, as well as being at the Santiago military base shortly before the soldiers had begun training for a very specific mission it would be safe to assume that the G-Man and his employers had planned this whole event in order to acquire something. While the border world of Zen would be a great conquest for the group, the consequence of creating a resonance cascade would also affect the very future of the human race and test specific individuals on how they would adapt and survive such a situation. At the age of 22, Adrian and his team were finally given the order to leave for their top secret mission as members of the Hazardous Environmental Combat Unit. Boarding the Goose 7, the team were flown through the New Mexico desert, still unaware of the mission they had ahead of them. As the team sat waiting to arrive, some began to become frustrated with the lack of communication of the mission at hand, in which the commander shut down their concerns instantly, telling them that he would explain the mission and their orders when they would shortly reach their destination. As the group settled down, Adrian witnessed the brutal attack on Goose 3, an Osprey carrying other members of the HECU. With the Osprey destroyed, its remains fall into the desert below. With Goose 3 down, the Xenian invaders turned their sights to Goose 7, and within it, Adrian and his team, still unaware of why they are here, are struck down next where many die, along with Adrian's commander. As the chaos around him unfolds, Adrian is knocked unconscious. Now several hours after the resonance cascade that had brought Xenian lifeforms to planet Earth, Adrian comes in and out of consciousness as he awakens within the Black Mesa research facility. From his brief moments of consciousness, he views the hazardous environmental combat unit fighting against the brutal forces of Zen. To his luck, he is pulled inside from the conflict by both his comrades and a scientist at the facility, who, 
against his better judgement, attempts to save the lives of the units injured by the Xenian life forms. Now awakening fully within an infirmary, Adrian is informed by the scientist that he had been in a terrible accident and although many of his unit had not made it, he had. Hopeful for escape, the scientist informs Shepard that he saw a radio at the crash site and he should use it to seek help. With the facility slowly becoming overrun at this point by Xenian forces, Adrian fights through on his way to the crash site. As Adrian had never received his orders due to the crash, he could only think that he and his unit were being sent here to clear the facility of the Xenian lifeforms, but unaware his real orders were to also silence all witnesses, this including the scientists. Moving through, Adrian was unaware that his fellow members of the Hazardous Environmental Combat Unit had created a war with the scientists, and one of them would not accept his fate easily. Due to the increasing numbers of Xenian lifeforms in Black Mesa, the Hazardous Environmental Combat Unit had slowly become overrun and the troops had begun to take mass casualties. In combination with this, the HECU had taken it upon themselves to search for a specific scientist, Gordon Freeman, after he had taken out many of their troops while defending himself and the scientists of the facility from being murdered by the HECU. All Gordon wanted to do was fix the resonance cascade. Reaching the crash site, Adrian hears the report of an evacuation for his unit. Wanting to also be extracted, he traverses the facility using the Black Mesa transit system and vents to make his way to the extraction point. On his way, he encounters and kills many of the hostile Xenian creatures and attempts to save as many of the facility's scientists attacked by them as he can. Arriving at the extraction point, Shepard sees the members of the Hazardous Environmental Combat Unit boarding an Osprey. On his way down, he sees one of his team interrogating an unarmed scientist, and from this, he gathers that maybe he had gotten the wrong idea on why he had been sent to the facility in the first place. Continuing down to the Osprey, and with it in view with the surviving soldiers boarding it, Adrian could now breathe a sigh of relief that this nightmare might be finally over, but the G-Man still had plans for him. Travelling down the hallway towards the Osprey, the G-Man activates the closure of the hangar doors of the area, sealing Adrian inside. All Adrian could do was watch in frustration as the Osprey took off from the facility, leaving him alone. Now trapped inside without a plan, Adrian travels deeper into Black Mesa where he learns from a scientist the true nature of his mission, that he was originally sent here to clear the Black Mesa research facility of the Xenian lifeforms and clear it of all witnesses. With this, his relationship with the scientists change as they see him as just another one of the brutal troops sent in to kill them. After hearing a radio transmission, Adrian discovers that he is not the only abandoned soldier and later bumps into two other members of the HECU where they plan to work together letting their hatred of Gordon Freeman go so that they can simply leave the facility and survive after being abandoned by those that were meant to have their backs. Although their journey at this point had been tough enough, the surviving HECU members learned that Black Ops forces had been sent to the facility to clean up the resonance cascade, the Xenian forces, the scientists and now the remaining members of the HECU. Coming into contact with the Black Ops for the first time, Adrian survives their attacks and continues to discover other surviving members of the HECU, and together they search for an exit to the Black Mesa research facility. This leads Adrian to the Lambda Complex, where for a couple of seconds he has the opportunity to murder Gordon Freeman entering a portal but he refrains and keeps his mission in hand to save himself and his fellow troops. While he had not used the portal Gordon had used, to escape the Lambda Complex himself, Adrian had to use another portal in which entering, he views the stunning borderworld of Zen for the first time. Through multiple trips to Zen in a means to accessing new areas of the Black Mesa facility, Adrian's arsenal of weaponry increases, where he learns to use not only man-made weapons of destruction, but also Xenian and Race X weapons to not only fight the hordes of alien forces, but also to navigate the facility. One of these being the Barnacle Grapple, which gave Adrian the ability to quickly move to a spot with ease. 
On his journey, Adrian learns that the Black Mesa Research Facility had been travelling to Zen for a while and had constructed giant biodomes in the hope to research the creatures of the border world. Now at this point, separated from his marines, he hears a radio transmission which leads him to fight with a pit worm, a deadly creature that had wiped out many of the HECU. With the ability to think quickly in these stressful situations, Adrian manages to drop toxic waste on the creature, killing it with ease. Full of resilience and with many alien creatures killed, Adrian's journey was far from over. As he makes his way through, he kills many more creatures on his journey in an attempt to help his comrades and himself escape. These creatures being more Vortigaunt, Vortigors and even a Gargantua, killing these creatures being feats that only someone with a natural skill in combat could complete, a true testament to both his training at the Santiago military base and a natural ability to survive. Still on the search for an exit, Adrian comes across a parking garage and here, he discovers one of the main aims of the Black Ops forces. After taking out some of the units set up here, he discovers a thermonuclear device being set up where the Black Ops team intended to use it to destroy the whole of the facility and everything within. Aware this would remove his chance of survival, Adrian kills the Black Ops forces arming and guarding the device, and then deactivates it. On his way out of the parking garage, he observes the G-Man reactivating it through a window, and with no way back out of the building, he could only attempt to find a quick escape from the facility before the bomb detonated. Through Adrian's journey, the G-Man had been observing his actions and had seemingly only intervened when Adrian had acted in a way that had threatened his plans. With no clear exit in sight to leave this facility, Adrian continues to survive against the constant attacks of the multiple hostile forces within. Having shown clear combat experience, good morals, and the ability to defy death multiple times since his arrival at Black Mesa, Adrian makes his way to an old industrial area deep underground where he would face his greatest foe, an enormous gene worm attempting to come through to Earth using a giant portal. As he had done multiple times at this point, Adrian fights for his life against this grotesque creature and kills it after a long and brutal battle. With the death of the gene worm, the portal becomes unstable and Adrian is hit by its waves. Awakening in a V-22 Osprey At first, it appeared that Adrian had been rescued, but upon looking up, he realised he had been taken by the G-Man. The man that had been following him every step of the way, even since his training at the Santiago military base. As the Osprey flew further outside of Black Mesa, the thermonuclear device detonated, destroying the facility and killing everything within. The G-Man had saved Adrian from this fate, and now he would learn why. The mysterious entity told Adrian that he had adapted and survived against the odds, qualities that the G-Man had seen in himself, and so he had persuaded his employers to allow Adrian safe exit from the facility. Seeing great potential in Adrian, but with no clear use for him as of yet, the G-Man decided he would be of great use one day. Through his conversation with the G-Man, Adrian noticed only a fraction of the true power that this entity possessed. As the Osprey flew, it took both Adrian and the G-Man through different dimensions at ease until they finally came to a void. Aware that Adrian could still cause some harm in some capacity for his and his employer's plans in the future, the G-Man decided to place him in a void, stuck in stasis for the foreseeable future where Adrian could do no harm and in return, no harm could come to him. Even 20 years later, the now Combine occupied planet Earth waited for Corporal Adrian Shepard's return. As a recruit of the G-Man and his employers, and their ability to foresee and meticulously plan every move, we know he was taken for a reason, due to his particular set of skills, and he will be deployed when the time is right. I ask Resistance member, do you think Adrian would still have attempted to save the lives of those across the facility if the Osprey had never crashed, or would he have just been another grunt attempting to hunt down the Freeman? Adrian is absolutely a fan favourite at this point and I wanted to see if we would at least see him in the future. In terms of his return from Valve, they have mentioned Adrian a few times. In 2006, Gabe Newell hinted that Adrian would return one day, 
which was also at the point that Return to Ravenholm was being developed, which featured Adrian as the protagonist. And again, in 2009, Mark Laidlaw explained the return and canonicity of Adrian to be similar to Schrodinger's cat. He exists and does not exist depending on if the G-Man has a use for him, the G-Man being Valve in this scenario. Now, as I did with the Father Gregory video, I could not make a video about Corporal Adrian Shepard without at least mentioning Return to Ravenholm. Developed between 2006 and 2007, Return to Ravenholm, also known by the name of Half-Life 2 Episode 4, was a game in development by both Arkane Studios and Valve. Sadly, it was cancelled and so we did not get to play it. In the game, we would have once again played as Adrian. In this game, I guess the G-Man would have released Adrian from his slow stasis where he would wake up after the Combine invasion. From here, another fan favourite, Father Gregory, would discover him and they would go on an adventure together. As the game was to be set between Half-Life 2 and Half-Life 2 Episode 2, it would have been great to see how the world was affected by the Resistance, and it would have been amazing to see if Adrian actually made an impact on saving the world away from Gordon's story. As a HECU member, that could have brought up some issues between him and the Resistance. The game was sadly cancelled after the studio determined that the zombie feature had been overplayed by this point, regardless of the new variations of the zombies added. In this game, the mutation of the headcrabs had reached the point where the zombies did not even need headcrabs attached to them at this point. As I only wanted to briefly mention Return to Ravenholm, I'll leave it here, but if you want to learn more about the cancelled game, then go and visit the YouTube channel Noclip, who did a great video diving into it. I have also linked the video below. While researching for this episode, I thought I knew everything there was to know about Adrian due to the fact that he generally pops up in the Black Mesa storyline nearly every time, even briefly. As much as I love Adrian's story and fight to do the right thing, his story does hold a huge significant factor within the Black Mesa incident. He attempted to stop the destruction of Black Mesa to save those still trapped within. The most interesting part of his storyline is that it gave us more of an insight into the moves of the G-Man and his employers. We know that the G-Man was not there by chance and that he did intend for the Black Mesa facility to be destroyed. Now, after reading some comments on recent videos, I have seen that some fans do not believe that Adrian and the whole of Half-Life Opposing Force is canon due to it being developed by Gearbox Software instead of Valve. And so, I looked to see what Valve had said about this. Mark Laidlaw, the writer of the Valve-based series, has said that they, being Valve, do not get involved in issues of canonicity and that there is no official stance, the games are as they are. I guess with this, if there is no true canon in the eyes of Valve, then my perception of this is that it is literally down to what the player considers to be canon. This is just my interpretation of this, and so, in my opinion, Opposing Force and Adrian's story is canon. With this in mind, and with having Half-Life Alex release over the last few years, I would love to see Adrian return in a similar fashion. After all of these years, he is still in stasis waiting to be deployed. Or, he has been deployed already, and we have just not seen his adventure. Adrian would be fantastic to revisit anyway. As Adrian is a member of the Hazdas Environmental Combat Unit, and with the general HECU grunt being used on the cover of the game, I had to use that as the character model of Adrian in the making of this video. As far as I can tell, this is how he should have looked within the situation anyway. It was fun to actually play around with a HECU member for a change. That was the lore behind Corporal Adrian Shepard in Half-Life. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like and a comment on your thoughts. If you really liked it, then go ahead and subscribe. I know you have already watched a couple of videos by now, so why not just subscribe and commit? If you would like to stay up to date with everything I get up to outside of YouTube, then follow my Twitter and Instagram. I also stream on both YouTube and Twitch every Friday, where we are currently playing through Fallout New Vegas and Alien Isolation. The link is in the description if you are interested. Finally, I would like to thank my patrons who are helping to support the channel. I really appreciate you. Thanks to the old gods, Detroit, RVWV, Arco, Brunette Janas, and Jojo Scotia. And an extra special thank you to the Elder Ones tier, Scrushroom, Jonas, Lois, and Queen Arby. Thank you so much, guys. What did you think of this lore video? I loved Adrian as a protagonist, and as I have already said in this video, I would love to see him return in a future installment. Maybe he could meet Gordon. Adrian has one of the best memorable storylines for me in a video game. He was literally trained for a mission, and after landing away from his fellow Hazardous Environmental Combat Unit members, 
he went with his natural instinct to help people instead of hurting them. He was a true hero. I ask you, what did you think of Corporal Adrian Shepard and his story? Would you like to see him return in a potential future installment of the series where he could fight against the Combine? And finally, do you think that Adrian and his whole story is canon? Let me know below. If you have any suggestions for future Half-Life lore videos, please let me know. For the next few, I am thinking about the Resistance, the Quarantine Zone, the Overwatch voice and maybe even Jeff if I can find enough information. I did grab these from your comments. That was everything I wanted to cover in this episode. Now Resistance member, enjoy your day. Bye.